So, 17. Um, so we have, in this example, what they're asking us to do is to write uh, the rule in, or write the sum notation for this. So we have a sequence, and that's a sum, obviously. We don't have a value of the sum, but it's one of the sums that you would add it in. So what they want to do is just write this in the rule. It's obviously finite, right? It starts. It starts and it ends. The problem is we don't know what the rule is. Um, and we don't know how many terms we have. So let's go ahead and write our sigma notation. All right, we're going to say we're going to start at n equals 1, and we'll go to the end, which we don't know right now. We'll figure that out in a second. Um, however, let's remember the rule for sigma notation. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1. Well, do we know what a sub 1 is, the first term? 7. Yeah, that one's easy, right? Do we know what r is? Well, to find r, just, yeah, just take 14 divided by 7. Um, which has to be equal to 28 over 14, which is equal to 2. And then to the n minus 1. So cool, we got the formula. We got the rule, right? We know where it starts. We just don't know where it ends, correct? So if you guys remember, when, we're doing, when I have this formula, when I have this rule, and let's say a sub n equals 7 times 2 raised to the n minus 1. Brittany, if I want to find the 11th term, what would I do with that formula? Plug 11, plug 11 in for that. Plug 11 in for n. <laughs> right? You just plug 11 in for n. So the problem that I have right now is I don't know what n is. I know what the value is, but I don't know for what value of n it is. So I can say that 896 is my last value. However, I do not know what value of n that is. So I have to set an equation of my rule saying, here's the last value. I just don't know what I plugged in for n. So I got to solve for n. So to do that, I divide by 7. So I have 896 divided by 7, which is 128 equals 2 to the n minus 1. Ooh, so now we need to solve for n as it's in an exponent. So there's two options I can do. I can take the log of both sides, right? Log base 2 of 128 equals log base 2 of 2 to the n minus 1. Take the log base 2 of both sides. Why? Because the property of the logs takes that out. Then I could either plug that into my calculator if I have a calculator that I can use a different base 2. Or if I don't have a calculator with that, I can just use log base 10 using my change of base formula. And what I get when I do that, actually, I could do it that way. Or you could also say, can I re or use our 1 to 1 property. Can I rewrite 128 as base 2 raised to a power? 2 raised to the 8th, I'll guess. 2 raised to the 8th, dang. 2 raised to the 7th. So therefore, I can say 2 to the 7th is equal to 128, which is equal to 2 to the n minus 1. The 1 to 1 property, which we spent time in Algebra 2 and earlier this year, divides out. So I can say now 7 equals n minus 1, 8 equals n. Okay. So now I finish. And there you go. OK? And that's it. Done. Fine. No mas.